Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is now the third video in this series on the Nano VNA. You'll find links to the other videos in this series down in the description. In this video, I'm going to continue the process of doing measurements with just one port. This is called S11 measurements in the world of VNAs because the signal goes out port 1 and is measured on port 1. These are all reflective measurements. We are going to measure the input impedance of this lovely 50 MHz bandpass filter that I threw together. It's supposed to have a 50 ohm input impedance, so we'll see what it really is in the process of this video. Now, as a note, this filter actually has absolutely no intended purpose except as a teaching aid for these videos. I picked the pass frequency out of the air because, well, it just felt like a good one. And I picked the designed input impedance just because it's a standard that you'll most likely see out there. So if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So like any project, the first step is always planning. Well, the first step that I'm going to take is to gather information about the electrical aspects of this measurement. The questions we have to ask relative to measuring input impedance are, what is the designed input impedance of this device? And what are the frequency aspects of this design? Well, the first is easy. The filter is designed around an input impedance of 50 ohms. The second one is not quite as easy. Yes, the filter is designed to have a pass frequency of 50 megahertz, but it also has bandwidth. So we ask, over what range of frequencies are we interested in its input impedance, or is it just at the intended pass frequency? Well, in our case, let's just be concerned with its input impedance from 47.5 MHz to 52.5 MHz. We'll just pretend that this is the extent that the system it will be embedded in will require. Now, let's go on to planning the mechanical aspects of our measurement. Well, now we have to look at connectors. What kind of connections do we have to make? Now, the Nano VNA has SMA connectors. The filter has N-type connectors. Now, I have two sets of calibration standards. I have the SMA standards that came with the Nano VNA, and I have N-type. So, what kind of cables do I have? Well, I have these cute little blue cables with SMA connectors on each end. I also have cables with SMA on one end and BNC on the other. Now, I could use either of these with the adapters that I have. Now, the simplest would be to convert everything to N-type and calibrate with the N-type standards. But I want to be able to demonstrate how to do a port extension in this video. So let's play like the only calibration standards I have are the SMA standards that came with the Nano VNA. And this is most likely right where you're at. Now with this assumption, we use the cute little blue cables that has an SMA connector at both ends. The SMA standards are of all the male variety, so I will have to put a female-to-female -female SMA adapter at the end of the cable so that I can use my standards at the end. After calibration, this SMA adapter will have to be removed and the SMA to N-type adapter put in its place. And this is where the port extension comes in. We have to accommodate the change in terminations of the cable. Okay. So, let's get ourselves ready to make the measurement. Well, let's begin this process by getting the Nano VNA all set up for this measurement. I will begin with the frequency setup. I tap on the screen to bring up the main menu. If you're not there, tap on the back option until you get there. Now I tap on the stimulus menu item. We know the extents of our measurement, so I'm going to specify the start and stop frequencies of the measurement. 
I tap on the Start menu item. Then I enter 47.5 on the keypad. Then I tap on the M for megahertz. I tap in the middle of the screen to bring up the menu again. Then I tap on the Stop menu option. Then I enter 52.5 on the keypad. Then I type on the M for megahertz. Now the frequency is set. Let's set up what we need to see on the screen now. I tap on the middle of the screen to bring up the menu. I tap on the back as needed to get back to the main menu. I tap on the display menu item. The first thing I want to do is configure how many traces I need. So I tap on the traces menu item. We can see that we have all four traces enabled. We are only going to need two. One will be for the actual impedance measurement. The second is going to be for doing the port extension. We will disable this second trace after we complete the port extension. I'm going to disable trace 2 and trace 3 by double tapping on their entries. Notice that they gray out. Now let's set up each trace. Trace 0 is currently selected as you can see from the check mark next to it. We will set this one up first. We tap on the back menu item to get back to the display menu. We want to set the channel that we're going to be making the measurements on first. So we tap on the channel menu item. Here we choose which channel is associated with the trace and the measurement. We will make sure that channel 0 reflect is selected. Now we tap on the screen to bring up the display menu again. We want to determine the format of the trace now. So we tap on the format menu item. Now because we're measuring impedance, we need to select Smith from the format menu. Now we want to be sure that the data that is reported is going to be in the form we want it to be. The default data format is reported in resistance and inductance or capacitance. And this is not the data format that we need. So let's change that. We tap in the middle of the screen to bring up the menu again. Then on back until we get all the way back to the main menu. Now we tap on the marker menu item. Then we tap on the Smith value menu item. We want our impedance reported in the form R plus XJ, so I tap on this menu item. Then back until I get to the main menu again. Trace 0 is now ready to go. Now let's turn our attention to trace 1. We are already at the main menu. Tap on the display menu option. Then trace. Now we have to select trace 1, so I tap on it. Now tap back to get to the display menu. Like before, we want to configure the channel associated with this trace. I tap on the channel menu item. This too has to be associated with channel 0, so I tap on the channel 0 reflect menu item. We have one last thing to do. The format of the trace. We tap in the middle of the screen to bring up the display menu again. Now I tap on the format menu item. We are interested in phase, so I tap on the phase menu item. Trace 1 is now ready to go. Let's go get ourselves connected up and ready to go on a physical level. Well, this is very simple. I connect my nice little blue cable to the Nano VNA. I install the female to female adapter, which is actually my through standard, to the end of the cable, and I'm ready to go. Well, now I'm ready to calibrate. I tap on the middle of the screen to bring up the menu. I tap on back as needed to return to the main menu. Now I tap on the calibrate menu item. Then on the calibrate menu item at the top of the calibrate menu. The first thing on the list is the open standard. So I install the open standard. Now I tap on the open menu item. When it is done, I remove the open standard and install the short standard in its place. Now I tap on the short menu item. When it is done doing the short thing, I replace the short standard with the load standard. Now I tap on the load menu item. Now that it is done, we have completed the calibration portion of our preparation. 
I can remove the load standard from the end of our cable. I tap on the Done menu item. Now, I'm not going to save all of this, so I will now tap on Back as needed to get back to the main menu. And so now we have to get things ready for the measurement. Well, I have to remove the female to female SMA adapter and install the SMA to N type adapter in its place. With this done, we can put the port extension in place to accommodate the new measurement situation. In the nano VNA world, this is referred to as electrical delay. To begin with, we will want two markers active, so let's do that first. We are at the main menu, so I tap on the marker option. Now we have to tap on the select marker option. At this point, we tap on marker 2 to turn this marker on. Now we tap on back until we get back to the main menu. I tap in the middle of the screen to dismiss the menu for the time being. I drag marker 1 to the far left end of trace 1. I drag marker 2 to the far right on trace 1. Now we're ready to do this whole port extension thing. Notice that the phase numbers at the top are not zero. Our goal is to get these as close to zero as possible by adding electrical delay. Now, I tap on the center of the screen to get the menu. If I'm not at the main menu, I tap on back until I am. I tap on the display menu item. On the display menu is the scale option. I tap on that. On the scale menu is the electrical delay option. I will tap on this. We are going to have to put in a time value in picoseconds or nanoseconds to shift the phase. A positive number shifts the phase up, and a negative number will shift the phase down. I'll warn you that this is a trial and error process. We try values and just see how they do. Because the starting phase value is negative, I'm going to put in a positive time. I'm going to guess at 250 picoseconds and see where this gets me. The phase is now way positive. I'll back this off to 100 picoseconds. Okay, we're getting closer. Now the phase is slightly negative, so I will try oh, 110 picoseconds next. Ah, notice that the phase is now significantly less than one degree for both of the markers. I'm done with the port extension. I can get rid of the second trace. Tap in the center of the screen to bring up the menu. Tap back to get the display menu. Tap on the trace menu item. Now we disable trace one. It is currently selected, so just a single tap should gray it out. Tap in the middle of the screen to dismiss the menu. Now we are finally ready to actually measure the input impedance of our filter. Well, to do this, we have two things that we have to do. First, this filter is designed around a 50 ohm impedance. Thus, we must properly terminate the output of the filter in 50 ohms. Now, I have a 50 ohm load which sports an N type connector that I am installing on the output of the filter. Second, we have to connect our measurement ready nano VNA to the input side of the filter. Now we look at the screen. Ack! I can't even see much of anything. It's just too small to do anything with. How can I make sense of this? Well, we can make this much easier to read if we change the scale used for the display. The default scale used for the Smith chart is 1. Let's change this to 0.2 so our tiny data will get 5 times larger. We tap in the middle of the screen to get the menu. We tap on back enough times to be back at the main menu. Now we tap on the display menu option, then the scale menu option on the display menu. Finally, we tap on the scale per division option on the scale menu. 
we enter 0.2 using the on-screen keypad. Then we tap on the times one key. Now our data is much larger and we can easily move our markers around. They should already be reciting at the edges of the frequency span. So what do we see for values? We can see at the top of the screen that at 47.5 MHz, the input impedance is 51.9 plus 10J. This gives us a magnitude of 52.85 ohms. At 52.5 MHz, the input impedance is 50.0 plus 1.40J, which gives us a magnitude of 50.01 ohms. So now let's move our marker 1 to the desired center frequency of 50 MHz. Here at 50 MHz, the input impedance is 52.0 plus 5.56J. This has a magnitude of 52.3 ohms. Well, not too shabby. The design was for a 50 ohm input impedance, and we are well within reasonable tolerances of exactly that. In the next video, I will be measuring the frequency response of this same filter. This will be our first two-port measurement in this series. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots!